question is, the NASA HARP machine operations is now moving to electromagnetic spectrum levels raining from the sky that will commence on Earth and we will see significant changes in our reality. In 1993, the FAA started warning pilots to stay away from a certain section of airspace over Alaska. The U.S. government was experimenting with a new breed of high-altitude electronic technology that was significantly altering the Alaskan airspace. The experiments continue to this day, and critics are warning that this project could have global effects that will destroy our planet. We're going to break down the electron rain that is literally happening right now but now we're going to get into the deeper aspect of what's happening is electromagnetic rain falling. They should be telling us the more bigger aspect and also what is the government stockpiling like crazy right now. The market tells you electromagnetic interference shielding sheets and tiles market is exactly what they're putting their money into. The private sector is doing it. The regular public government sector is doing it. And so the whole aspect of this is building up and ramping up. And it was an electromagnetic interference attack that recently supposedly just happened. And, and the Marines, they just had their information warfare specialties. They now have basically combined Marines in electromagnetic spectrum operations, cyber warfare operations, civil affairs, and psychological warfare operations. They've combined these units as a new unit, as a new unit all together because they know exactly what they're getting ready for. We all know, but still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The EMP stuff has never been more prevalent than now because society's never been more dependent on technology. I'm going to show you what it's going to look like. But I also want to point some things out that have been going on in the last couple of days that are very suspicious if you haven't noticed. Number one, has anyone noticed the cloud cover in this country, in America? The entire country is under clouds the last couple of days. And you might say, well, what does that mean? Well, first of all, if you look closely, these aren't natural clouds. These are all sprayed pretty much clouds around the country. The whole country would never be under one giant cloud. Okay, the odds of the whole country being under a cloud and then, you know, it clearing up down in Mexico are pretty slim. So what does that mean? Well, when they have the skies covered, they're usually doing tests such as this, which occurred recently in Houston in the last couple of weeks. They're telling you it's a reflection from an oil field or something along those lines. It's so insane. And people actually believe it. Take a look at this. It's the million dollar question Houstonians are wanting to know. What was that bright red light in the sky? The light seen in parts of East Houston, including Friendswood, League City, and other surrounding areas around 8.30 Wednesday night. So here's what our KHOU 11 meteorologists are saying. It was ongoing flaring at one of the oil refineries. That bright light from the flare was actually being reflected like a mirror by ice crystals in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere. So those are the types of things they want you to believe. They're claiming that all these loud sonic booms that are going on are meteors falling all over the place. No one sees them, no one finds them, of course. How convenient. Yeah, that's what we're supposed to believe is actually going on. Think of it this way. You can create an EMP, and a pulse, and have a sky that's completely magnetized. What do you think is in the sky? Everyone should know what's in the sky. We all know that it's all soft metals floating up there. So what do you think a magnetic pulse is going to do when the entire sky is covered in chem clouds? It's going to fry everything because the sky is going to be magnetized. Traveling at the speed of light, an EMP attack would strike everything directly in its line of sight. The higher the altitude, the greater the devastation. At 30 miles above the United States, the device would affect up to half a dozen states. But at 300 miles, the whole continent of North America would be brought to an irreversible standstill. I've come to White Sands Missile Range to see for myself what an EMP attack might actually do. Touching in the area, we'll now fire the EMP booster charging. This remote control helicopter is about to fly through an electric discharge of close to a million volts. And yet the most sinister thing about it 
Because there's no flash, no bang. There you go. There you go. Excellent work. Excellent work. Man, In an instant, the awesome. helicopter circuitry is completely fried. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. One second you're in the air, next second you're on the ground. Not a good way to go through the day, especially if you're in an airplane. Let's go take a look at it. You may have seen recently I've been covering some of the strange things that have been going on, from the birds falling out of the sky to just some of the sounds that people were hearing, sonic booms. There it is. Huge, loud explosion. But she isn't the only one who's heard them. It doesn't sound like fireworks. Uh, it's not a similar sound of fireworks. It's almost like a deep, it's like a deep rumble, a deep boom. There have been really loud explosions. Alta lives with her boyfriend in the Marin County area of San Geronimo Valley. The sheriff's office confirms the explosions says there have been at least six of them in the last month. All around the country, this stuff's going on. And now we have this story from Alaska, which, of course, I know a lot of you are thinking what I'm thinking right off the bat the second I see this. And it's Alaska when you see a strange cloud formation over the sky. Of course, we immediately think of harp, because why wouldn't we think of harp? In Alaska, the rugged, pristine wilderness is timeless most of it remaining just as it has for thousands of years. In the midst of all this natural beauty, just outside the small town of Gakona, stands an enormous and seemingly harmless antenna farm. It is a $100 million Air Force project known as HARP, and critics of the soon-to-be-completed facility charge it just may turn out to be the ultimate doomsday machine. When HARP is fully operational, it will transmit extremely powerful blasts of high-frequency radio waves directly up into the atmosphere, superheating the electrons that make up the ionosphere. This will cause them to disperse, effectively punching a hole in the ionosphere. You have these people who are, I guess, identify as extreme liberal type scientist people who show up on the news and show up all over the place and show up around the country at speaking events to talk about our government using weather and how even in Vietnam they were doing it and people still think it's a conspiracy. So a cloud of mystery fueled social media conspiracies near Lazy Mountain, Alaska. Meteor, Russian missile, plane crash and UFO are among the explanations for a ghoulish lowering silver, a sliver of a cloud with finger like trails. A rescue team sent to search for a crash on Lazy Mountain found nothing suspicious, Alaska state troopers reported. Let's just take a look at what's going on in Alaska because we know harps up there. Well. We, like I said, we already know that they control and manipulate the weather. They tell us. Well, instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. This is potentially a game changer. By firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, creating what are called ions, and these ions act like seeds, like dust particles, bringing down rain and even lightning. So even in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam War to wash out the Viet Cong. So recently, the government at Chernobyl basically said it was a radiation spike. Some scientists did some researches into it. They used gamma ray technology to see if it really was just, you know, radiation. But then they said, you know what, we found something different. Something different is going on here. And when they looked into it, they said military electromagnetic frequency interference may potentially cause reporting anomalies from detectors. But again, this would be expected to follow a spatial pattern to be observed for gamma ray dose detectors. And some of the Russian soldiers left basically reportedly sick because these frequencies can make you sick. And people on the channel were saying they've been feeling tired and everything else. Well, guess why? Look at this article and read it yourself. And all the frequency has been in the atmosphere Harp is tuned up. Things that we found in other Air Force documents, um, one in particular was um, a document put together in 82. The document was called Low Intensity Conflict in Modern Technology with a forward by no, none other than Newt Gingrich. And one section spoke about using radio frequency radiation transmitters for disrupting um, human thinking, um, uh, for de basically debilitating troops invisibly by being able to bombard them with radio frequency that was tuned to just the right frequency in just the right waveform 
so as to totally disrupt their mental process and basically debilitate those troops. Zap incoming missiles, disrupt global communications, and engineer the weather. And ready? There's one more. Some people believe the technology being tested here could be used for sinister projects involving humans. Radio waves messing around with people's brain waves. And guess what? The military denies this one, too. The uh, human mind is subject to uh, being affected by uh, radio frequency energy, and that's what this device is. In other words, you can move the moods of large populations using this kind of technology. The bigger, larger situation in the atmosphere right now. Now, if you look at the recent articles, they're not really getting into the specifics of it, but they're telling you stuff like atmospheric river of moisture or trigger storms and tornadoes this week. Well, why is that? Because when they were tuning around and planning the atmosphere, and now they're telling us that electron rain is going to be falling. I'm going to tell you exactly what that's going to do to the atmosphere, exactly how that can affect everything. And here's the thing. They tell you what it comes from. It says the type of electromagnetic wave called Whistler waves. And so we're talking VLF waves. And actually, you know, basically Hart was just tuning some of these things. And guess what it actually does? It actually messes with certain patterns of what we've seen recently. We have now uncovered evidence of what's really going on behind this with harp and NASA frequencies. First off, people think the auroras is just like normal stuff. First of all, we're going to show you a Project Bluebeam operation uh, not too long ago. It was like maybe two, three years ago. Check it out. So they were creating stuff like that in the atmosphere. Okay, so... All that stuff that they've done was not real, okay? It was artificial projections. Why am I showing you that? Because the electron rain deals with all of this, okay? Because another document said HARP creates bullseye in the sky. It says the technique works by using high-frequency radio waves to accelerate electrons in the atmosphere. So who's putting electrons in the atmosphere? When we go back to this report, and it says the first known space hurricane pours electron rain. It's not a space hurricane. It's up in the sky. And it says Earth's upper atmosphere cooks up a storm. So they're cooking up some weird stuff here. And we're going to go down into the bigger detail of it. So what are the effects of this electron rain? Here it is right here. Let's check it out. Electron pre precipitation can lead to substantial short-term loss of ozone, capping out around 90%. However, this phenomenon also correlates to some long-term ozone depletion, as well as studies have revealed that 60 major electron precipitation events occur from 2002 to 2012. So they've been doing this, but now they're saying it's speeding up and it's moving faster and things are changing a little bit more critically than before. What is the chemical effects of it? Guess what? Everything that you've seen this week was a part of the effects of what was happening. And I didn't know none of this until I read this report right here. So let's read exactly what happened. So you go into it. It says the highly energetic electrons that enter our atmosphere from above cause many chemical changes in the atmospheric gases. And then when you go down, it says also this may cause heating initiation of chemical reactions which again can give more radiation loss also chemical composition might be altered and there could be dynamical effects such as waves winds and turbulence now tell me that this week you didn't see winds waves and turbulence and it was just crazy this week so the fact that they say is now falling and is moving faster at a faster rate is to move forward the government is stockpiling frequency uh, emf shielding all types of stuff how can we show from this upper atmosphere rain, uh, electron rain, electronic rain, or uh, warfare rain? Let's say that. There's a lot of movies predicting all these different things. We can control our weather. There's potential for catastrophic weather events on a global scale. Hold on. It isn't just conspiracy theorists who are concerned about HARP. In January of 1999, the European Union called the project of global concern and passed a resolution calling for more information on its health and environmental risks. Despite those concerns, officials at HARP insist the project is nothing more sinister than a radio science research facility.